Up team, we're launching in three, two, one, launch. Good control. We're here on the edge of the Wiltshire Downs at a private airstrip where students from Southampton University are flying their own unmanned aircraft and testing new technology they've developed and perhaps they'll let me have a go at flying one later. Professor Scanlon, you're going to be the director of the new course uh, that's going to teach the next generation of students how to build UAVs, drones. In the public mind, they may be associated with police surveillance or military use in Afghanistan, but, but their use is going to spread into all sorts of other fields. Well, the, the initial set of customers that, that we have are scientists. We're doing work with British Antarctic Survey, Met Office, uh, climate sci scientists, um, oceanographers, so they can quickly and cheaply fly these things and ga gather data from uh, various sources. We're just launching a new research project where we want to fly extremely small UAVs, literally wingspan 30 centimetres. And we, the, the research challenge is to see how small we could make them. The, the US military have already uh, developed what looks like a hummingbird, something that's literally, you know, 10 centimetres high, uh, which has a, you know, rudimentary control system on board and some sensors that they, they, they've successfully flown. Our future research is aimed at getting swarms of aircraft to communicate with each other. So in the application of volcanic ash monitoring, if one of the aircraft discovers at high concentration, it'll tell all the others and they'll come and, and, and swarm into the neighbourhood to give you a high density of measurements. Presumably military and, and surveillance areas of interest as well, I mean, and, and that market is out there. But it you... is, but um, I draw a parallel with uh, GPS technology and we've got a GPS receiver here and that was completely military technology. Now the market is dwarfed by civil applications. Um, you know, everyone has a, a GPS in their car, a, a sat-nav in their car. Uh, so, uh, for all sorts of reasons, we have an interest in civil applications. Um, certainly on the course, we won't be looking at military applications at all. And I'm just using the right-hand control, am I? Now you can hold the high, push the stick even harder. Okay, hold right it over to the left, That's and then it. bank and it back to the centre, and it'll and back to the centre. Okay, straighten, and straighten up. up. Perfect. Yep. And we're flying back over the left. Um, it moves at a fair pace, doesn't it? Professor Keane, um, you helped design this plane, which is a world, the world's first laser-printed aircraft. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So it's a five-piece aeroplane, two wings, a fuselage, a nose, and an uh, avionics tray inside it. And the whole thing goes together without a single screw or clip. The wings are elliptical in shape, and this was a, a thing that everybody knows the Spitfire flew with, and they have some interesting properties which mean that they are particularly good for fast aircraft and manoeuvrable aircraft, and we adopted those. Uh, Spitfire itself was designed in Southampton, we're at Southampton University, we thought why not? The real difference between these and military UAVs is cost. Uh, the entire cost, including all the componentry for an aeroplane like this, is measured in a few thousands and that transforms the possibilities. I like to tell people that the thing I expect to see someday is uh, when I get a parcel which I've uh, had delivered to me because I bought something on eBay, one of these will land in the garden and it won't be so much like the owls of Hogwarts, it'll be an unmanned vehicle which drops, detaches a payload and flies away. Why not? <laughs> It will go level, it will fly level. And then it's so commanded to wings and then level. It's, yeah, then it's commanded to the wings and level. And I can flick out, reposition. Yep. It's gone from research to scientific use. We have um, scientific customers using the autopilot for their own experiments. And we've now recently um, got in contact with some customers that are doing aerial photography and environmental research. Um, again, uh, flying their aircraft, um, uh, using the autopilot to make a precise grid over the gland and stitch the pictures together into one big image. I don't see um, UAVs being used in a sort of in a in a spying sort of situation i think already people don't like that with cctv cameras a cctv camera in the sky is not going to get many votes so um i i don't see that being something that's going to increase um with uavs i can't get the wing level to the left i think that time lads that's a landing 
Pitched um, vertically, nose down, or you lost the elevator. Some of our flights we know are high risk flights. We're, we're trying some things and we're not 100% sure whether they'll work. Uh, and at the end of the day, you need to take a, a calculated risk. Luckily, there's no human being sitting in the aircraft, so uh, we, can, we can take risks that you perhaps wouldn't with manned aircraft. Reducing thrust. Good control. And build more like this, boys.